Welcome to Live at Manning, the NLP conference. I'm going to talk about bots that make us smart, smarter. I'm Hobson Lane, co-author of Natural Language Processing in Action. Uh, you can visit the GitHub page, github.com slash NLPIA, if you'd like to download the software. And there's additional information there, as well as the data sets and everything you need to, to do the sorts of things we're going to talk about in this uh, presentation. Uh, also, um, I am the CTO at Tangible AI, where we're actually putting this stuff to work, um, helping nonprofits save the world. You can visit us at tangibleai.com to keep up with what we're, how we're using natural language processing in action for good. So first I'll give you the state of the bots and then I will talk about how to build a smarter one and actually a kinder, better one. And then we'll talk, uh, we'll give a demo of um, what that bot looks like. So in 2016, I don't know if you took those same surveys that I did, but uh, they were able to pretty accurately gauge your personality and certainly your voting preferences during the 2016 election. And, um, and since then, there's been a very recent uh, leap forward in the uh, accuracy of uh, question answering bots like um, like BERT, uh, the Transformers model that uh, Google created. This, uh, this model was able to exceed even human level performance on the reading comprehension and question answering tasks uh, that were given it. And that was back in 2019. It's continued to advance even further more recently. So, but these bots in this natural language processing pipeline has been used to, uh, to know your type. And, and for big tech, this typically means your stereotype. So they put you in buckets like your Myers-Briggs or ocean personality profile so that they can predict your behavior. And in particular, give you advertisements or uh, propaganda to uh, direct your behavior, um, uh, encourage you to vote a particular way or encourage you to purchase a particular products. Um, also, those bots tend to be in walled gardens. They're very tightly integrated with the OS and even uh, the entire business uh, model for many large corporations. Um, you can't really trust them for, uh, for privacy nor accuracy. Um, they have regularly been found to have released your data, either um, unintentionally or used your data for nefarious purposes intentionally. So be wary of bots uh, at uh, big tech, um, as I'm sure you all are. Um, another one that you might, another way you might not be familiar with bots um, interfering with your life and not really helping you be smarter is when you ask them a question such as this one about, say, you're on a road trip to, to Vegas with a 13-year-old son who has epileptic seizures and, and what to watch for that might trigger those seizures, you're going to get back search results that sell you products. Uh, they're not, you're not going to actually give you the answer to your question like what those seizures. We'll try to put uh, questions like that into um, our bot and we'll see if it can do a little bit better at giving you a direct answer to your question. So that brings us to query. The, uh, the bot that knows you, um, you can teach it and you can trust it. You can upload your own documents, your journal, and everything that you um, would not trust big tech with because it is entirely under your control. Query is 100% open source. You can spin it up on your local laptop and it reaches out to resources like Wikipedia or those that you um, connect it to, such as your own hard drive and any documents that you've um, stored there. Uh, how does it do that? Well, um, you simply have to put those documents in a database. You can see the, the arrow at the top bringing in those documents into an Elasticsearch database. That's what we've chosen to, to put it in. But that's um, it can be any document store that allows free full text search on a reasonable amount of time. 
And then um, you take your input to the bot. Uh, that input comes in as typically as a question, like what triggers seizures? And then um, that will search the database of documents, um, either the documents you've put into Elasticsearch. We've also uploaded um, Wikipedia, um, almost all of Wikipedia articles into our Elasticsearch version of Query. Um, but the, the version I'm going to show you here will do that dynamically. It will go out uh, in real time to Wikipedia and grab the articles that it thinks are relative to your questions. And then it will um, provide those documents as what's called context to the BERT question answering model. We fine tuned it to answer questions based on the squad data set on question answers. Those, um, those question answers uh, can then be ranked according to the confidence that BERT has, or in our case, we use Albert, and the, the confidence it has in those answers that it retrieved from those documents. We can also simultaneously send those questions to other personalities or bots. So we have built into query bots like Eliza that can um, can help you with any emotional um, conversation you'd like to have. And um, uh, the, I don't know if this is 1960s technology that can actually help you maintain awareness of your own emotions. And then um, that can all be combined into a conversation planner, which then chooses the response that most uh, closely matches your intent. Some other use cases where if you had a, a bot you could trust that was truly um, looking out for your best interest, you could, um, you could use it for education, uh, even for kids that you might not otherwise trust big tech with. Uh, for instance, uh, my partner at Tangible AI um, helped Oyotu, Oyori build uh, chatbots to educate children about how to stay safe online and prevent, detect, and uh, avoid cyberbullying and unsafe content. More recently, she's built a, a chatbot for helping women and disadvantaged groups, people and disadvantaged groups, for for um, empower them and, and gain more confidence in their ability to work within the workplace and in school. Um, it helps you deal with uh, things like imposter syndrome and uh, various saboteurs that can uh, encroach on your daily life if you don't pay attention to and aren't educated by this chatbot. And, um, these cognitive distortions that can distort your perspective on yourself and, in, and the world. So let's get into query, um, the, the more uh, general purpose chatbot that we've built. Um, it uh, can answer questions like, what are the symptoms of COVID-19? We asked this question back in um, February. Uh, before COVID-19 was really well understood. And yet it was, and it was answering this question with pretty interesting answers. We'll get better answers uh, out of Wikipedia um, that it's, and the reading comprehension sort of exercise that Bert does um, when we do the demo shortly. What are the symptoms of coronavirus? Again, not really good um, information available back in February, but as we've improved qu query and um, and uh, improve the, and Wikipedia articles have become more accurate, the, um, the, the answers to those questions have become more accurate. Um, and likewise, if you, you're a mother and you're worried about transmitting the coronavirus to your baby, um, you get this sort of answer back from Query, at least you would have back in February. We'll try all of these again and see how she does uh, with the more recent um, versions of Wikipedia, as well as our, our updated faster version of the, of the query uh, algorithm and BERT. So that's it. Let's move on to the demonstration and see how it does in real time here. So let's try taking, let's ask it some uh, those easy questions first. So what are the, what are the symptoms of coronavirus? We'll capitalize it correctly first, and you'll see that it takes a few seconds. It's going out to Wikipedia or checking to make sure that um, it's already retrieved an article uh, for this coronavirus. Then it takes a few seconds also for Bert to read it. But it says that the main symptom of coronavirus is um, 
is fever. Let's ask it a different way. The symptoms of uh, COVID-19. See if that comes up with anything any better. Rash and muscle tremors? Maybe, but probably not. Uh, what about what are the symptoms symptoms of coronavirus? And let's not capitalize it this time and watch what happens. Um, done this earlier, so I happen to know how this will come out. You can you can answer it, ask it easier questions, and it will do much better. Things like um, uh, so somehow uh, decapitalizing the word made the symptoms mild. <laughs> Not sure exactly how that happened. And as you can see, we've uh, have some more work to do on the fine tuning of Bert. It's it's grabbing some extra characters at the end of many of these queries. Let's try. Uh, where was Barack Obama? born this could be a question that might get a lot of false answers if you ask this in the wrong search engine at the wrong time of the year um, uh, or at least back in um, uh, I guess it was 2012 uh, when this was a thing but uh, but you can see that um, uh, query is able to find the exact location where the president was born or our former president was born uh, when was Barack Obama born? You'll find that um, it can do that one uh, perfectly well as well. Um, so it turns out that there's a lot of questions about when and where inside of Wikipedia. There aren't, I'm sorry, inside of the squad uh, training set of questions and answers. So queries and, and BERT are very good at answering when and where questions. Let's try a who question. Who was um, Jimmy Carter's wife? Uh, th this one will surprise you. Um, uh, unfortunately, it does not do well on who, especially for wife, wife questions. It finds women that are related to the, um, uh, the object of the question. Rosalind turns out to be the name of uh, Jimmy Carter's um, uh, black woman who he hired to raise his children. So in a way, she did act as his wife. He was such, she was certainly the caregiver of his children, but it wasn't obviously his, um, his uh, law, by law wife. Let's try one more question. Let's see. What about... Um, what, how, how many are in a baker's dozen? Oh, 13 units. Wow. It didn't say, uh, before it, I, I asked it a different way and it said 13 precisely. It, uh, it's really interesting how it can be tripped up a little bit by um, by how you word the sentence. What about how many neurons in the human brain? Turns out, I think uh, Bert has been trained on a lot of questions about how many. Um, things like how many inches. Oh, that one didn't work. How many neurons are there in the human, in a human? Let's see if that works out any better. I was answering that earlier before I made some fixes uh, in preparation for this lightning talk. Looks like we're out of time though. So we'll call it a night. Ooh, wow, that was way off this time. Looks like I'm, um, I made some, how many galaxies in the universe? That'll be the last one. Hopefully she'll do a little better before I sign off. We'll ask two trillion. We'll have to check that one on Wikipedia. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you at the conference.
Have a wonderful night.